the trees regarding our gender identity and sexuality. When there's no place like home, empty air, an empty stare. Civil rights out on the cruel streets tonight. And we welcome back our good friend uh, Eddie McGuinness, who many will know from Dublin Pride, but also the Outing Festival, which is their main reason to talk to Eddie today. So, Eddie, first of all, welcome back to uh, LGBTQ Plus Life. As always, Fitz, we love coming back and chatting to you. It's been a while, but we're getting there. And after three years of hiatus, of being online like yourself, we're now getting out there and in person at the Outing Festival Valentine's Weekend. Yeah. Now, anybody looking at the video of this, Eddie, they will be surprised to see how good you're looking. But over the last couple of years, you've had a bit of a health scare just share with our friends and uh, allies, how are you uh, in 2023? 2023, I'm going into it is even more positive than I was going into 2021. For those who didn't know, I am actually in recovery for throat cancer and esophagus cancer. Uh, stage four and from that is it was very close to the bone literally but for all my friends out there and all those who have been asking for the last year or so all going well and in a positive way I'm keeping positive both mentally and physically and things are looking in the correct way but like any cancer out there we can never say it's gone until those key marks in our life uh, in the time frame of where cancer is but most importantly i will shout out to people get vaccinated against hpv because that's exactly what i had was hpv uh, and that's what caused my throat cancer well uh, on that note eddie i will uh, just reiterate what you said there if you ever think you've got uh, any sort of blood condition i had hepatitis c um I eventually got it cleared. I'm very happy now. My liver is in good working order. They won't take my blood, but that's beside the point. Again, get it checked out because I know people who have died from hepatitis C. But more to the point, Eddie, you've just come back from a well-earned and well-deserved break with your loved one. 20 years, I gather, uh, you've been together. Is that correct? Love is in the air, and hence I run a matchmaking music and arts festival in the west of Ireland. I love sharing the love, and I, I think that's my passion about getting people together. And myself and John got together 20 years ago. Uh, I spotted him in the George uh, literally two nights ago, uh, 20 years ago. And 10 years ago, we got civil partnership. And then it, it, uh, two years later, we got an upgrade into what I would call full marriage. So we've had all the good celebrations. But Mick, you will laugh at it. What we did was typical, me being the older one, to make sure I wouldn't forget our anniversary. We near enough got the dates tied together. The 23rd is when we met and the 25th is when we got married. So yeah. not bad going. Yeah. Not by, I tell you what, Eddie, and the reason, one of the reasons why I'm so proud of you is for the, in the last couple of days, I have been listening to one other, none other than Martina Burke, who is, of course, Enoch's mom. And yes. this was from 2015 when the marriage equality uh, referendum was going on. And she was discussing the mural opposite the George. Do you remember that great one? Yes. Amazing. Uh, Exactly. Now, Martina would have been of the view that people like yourselves, you know, marriage wasn't for you because basically you're just lads that like to go out and have a few drinks on a Friday and Saturday night, do whatever people do, and then leave each other. That's not, you basically knocked that whole prejudice on the head, and I'm so proud of you for that. But I think, Mick, as we will all look going back for decades and centuries, there is so many stages uh, and in a way, so many love stories out there of same-sex couples who have been around together. Like any 
relationship. It will be together for the, what would be together for that time frame. Mm -hmm. And as you know yourself, Mick, is we never know when we meet that person and how long we're going to be with that person. Mm -hmm. So that is most importantly, is meeting it, enjoying the time frame. And there's many a person I know who does happen to be heterosexual, whose relationships have lasted six months, a year, to 10 years, to my own parents of 50 years together. So that's not bad going. Hopefully we'll get there as well. Indeed. Would you reiterate what I say to younger people, um, particularly people of the, say, 25 to 40 age group, that relationships work if both parties want it to work? Oh, very much so. Relationships is all about communications. Sure. And relationships is also, also about being different as well in your own way. And by talking to each other, talking is crucial within any relationship. Uh, myself and John, we're very chalk and cheese, okay, in so yeah. many different ways. But we have our moments when we come together and we enjoy each other's company. Yeah. Also, we enjoy not being in each other's company. Absolutely. Because that's, also, that's also healthy as well. But also relationships, and especially within the wider circle, there's so many different diversities. What is the normative? Normative is what society puts on you. And society shouldn't allow to tell you what your relationship should be about. Mm. All you need to know is that you two, two people enjoy each other or three people in some cases or four but that is all about relationships and how those relationships and dynamics work how many yep. friends do you have mick how many friends do i have mick? Uh, so there's multiple layers of friendship there's a multiple mm -hmm. layers of relationships yeah. would you also agree eddie I, I say to people that your relationship begins every morning you start the you know you essentially you reevaluate it you re uh, you reestablish it and you consolidate it every day that's what makes it great i totally agree but it also i always say is finish on a kiss at night mm -hmm. even if nothing else happens finish on a kiss at night and tell that person how much you love love them because that is the moment when you're in a way saying good night to them I'll see you in the morning. And in the morning is where you continue a relationship for the next day. Yeah. Spoken like a true romantic. Eddie. I'm the... try. <laughs> well, I am the queen of matchmaking. I'm allowed. <laughs> Let's come to that very point because I first came across, or shall we say, encountered a young Eddie McGuinness about 10 years ago at Merrion Square with the poster you've got behind you, which was Panty. Uh, and, uh, talking about the outing festival nobody had really heard about it at that stage it's come on leaps and bounces then you were originally uh at lister and varna now you're at Bramoland. um you must be very proud of your creation can you hear me there yes yeah yeah no problem with that mick is uh when we came up with the whole idea of the matchmaking festival it was two things i love bringing people together as me and you know I've been running around, running prides, hosting at prides, organizing events. I ran clubs for going on 10 years, 20 years. Everyone will see Mother uh, Bukaki and other clubs and say, oh, they've been around a long time. In the 90s and the noughties, I ran clubs for going on 10, 20 years. And even Club Tees is the longest running club in Ireland. I love bringing people together. So... We got an opportunity in pre-2012 to, uh, in a way, gay up Lister and Varna, the oldest matchmaking festival in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, they have the fourth generation matchmaker there, Willie Daly as well. Mm -hmm. And by doing so, this allowed us to actually, in a way, spin it and do a twist on an old tradition. And by doing a twist on an old tradition, we created the outing festival. In a way, we outed the village. And for, you're talking up to a thousand people came along for up to eight years uh, or so in Lister and Varna. And in 2019, we kept it in County Clare, which is where my other half of my home is. Mm -hmm. uh, we moved to on the grounds of Drumoland Castle at the Inn at Drumoland. And it has been an amazing event and has grown in so many different levels from arts to music to film to everything else. And also the diversity of style of queer culture 
coming together from all over the world as well. Mm-hmm. One of the things I think is uh, great, Eddie, is the way you've encapsulated what I call the LGBT community in Ireland. Because when I came back here, my experience was in Australia, where it was very uh, partitioned. You know, we had the gay men over there. We had the uh, the lesbians over there. The, you never saw the bi people. <laughs> and uh, and the, the trans people were... They they were visible, but they weren't in any uh, segment. What you've done, and I think it's fabulous. When I came back here, I noticed Ireland is much more of a village atmosphere. It's fabulous. The women used to talk to the men. The men talked to the women. And we've just built on that now. We've got it through marriage equality. We've got it through gender recognition. We have become a beacon for others to follow. I think the diversity within our festival is very much key. I've just come back from Milan at the International LGBT Tourism Conference, Mm -hmm. and they were asking the question, our festival is unique in so many different ways, because as you say, the key events are catered for the gay market, they're catered for the lesbian market, they're catered for the bi market, the trans market, the non-binary. It's in a way, never catered for the whole lot. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to queer arts, queer arts actually embraces everything what is out there. Mm -hmm. And it's queer music as well. And that's what we do bring together. And of course, we have queer comedy, queer uh, burlesque, and of course, most importantly, uh, what you call it, the matchmaking element is about bringing people together, not just about relationships, but maybe finding your next best friend. Sure. Do we get uh, many overseas uh, people coming to it? Because I think... Oh, you love love it, Mick, is this year we have in excess of over 27 uh, lesbians from a lesbian festival called Oban in Scotland coming over. Uh And then, of course, of course, going forward, uh, we have some from the United States, Canada, uh, UK as in England, uh, which call it as in uh, also uh, a couple of pe- people over from France and Germany and Poland and Sw- uh, Sweden as well. So it's very much diversity within itself and international as well. Of course, we have a big hotel and complex with its own swimming pool, a fitness center. And of course, we will be doing everything from swimming lessons, a virgin pool party. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't have to be a virgin to get into the pool, but you do have to. Uh, it's an alcohol free zone. And that's what we encourage as well in different areas. We have yoga. And this is, again, supported by Sporting Pride Ireland, which we can't thank enough as well. And of course, support has been brilliant from the likes of Falcha Ireland and the Tourist Board uh, here in Ireland. But most mm-hmm. importantly, it's about local element and a, a Queer Clare and Limerick Pride coming together with the Outing Festival to enhance what they're doing on the ground at different times of the year. And of course, this just happens to be Valentine's weekend, the 10th to the 12th of uh, February. Sure. Before we talk about some of the great acts, and you do have not only a lot of acts, but you've got some great acts as well. Can you tell people about some of the events that would be happening during the daytime, because in the past, I know you've had uh, trips to um, uh, the cliffs of Mohar and various places like that. So if you could just share with people some of the daytime activities, other than you, you've mentioned the swimming, but some of the daytime activities people can look forward to. Well, it's a mixture of both. We encourage people who are, come to the festival to take mini breaks within a break over the weekend, go off and see Ennis, go off and see Shannon, go off and see Limerick itself, and then along the Shannon estuary itself, and then further afield, of course, the cliffs, uh, Doolin, and other areas around uh, uh, County Clare. But most importantly, we do things like hiking, archery, uh, boats on a uh, boat trip, a little boat trip on the lake. We also, uh, especially with Wet and Wild, we team up with the guys there. We're also uh, teaming up with the Limerick uh, rugby team, the Rainbow Ro- Rugby team there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they have been brilliant. And they're going to come out and do some queer games uh-huh. outside. So that could be anything from handbag throwing 
to a drag race and it's a very different drag race than RuPaul's drag race. <laughs> so you could you could say to the rugby players, I suppose a rock is out of the question. <laughs> <laughs> well, at the end of the day, a good scrum gets you together and uh, would call it, let's have a, a bit of ball game. Mm -hmm. Let's turn to some of the acts now. You've got uh, some acts that are returning that are very popular and very well known and then you've got some... Uh, new acts that perhaps have not been there before so let's start with the uh who are the uh uh the highlight acts clearly uh our eurovision uh uh winners would be uh so of course the draw the main draws eurovision is at the heart of our love and we are co one of our co uh, festival directors uh frank cleary's love for uh, Eurovision has always brought a spark to the festival. We've had everyone from uh, Catherine from Kat Katrina from Katrina in the Waves mm. uh, to Johnny Logan in 2019 when we were at the in a Tremoland. Uh, we've had uh, other uh, members, but most importantly this year is Linda Martin for the first time and yeah. Neve Kavanagh on our tenth anniversary of bringing people together is coming together for the third time to the festival because she loves it she sure. has a passion but she's an amazing friend and i have to say my heart goes out to her she's uh, so many she's an amazing voice as well between her and linda we're going to have an amazing weekend but i do have to say my co-host for the weekend is the one and only paul Ryder. the <laughs> sparkle is out there and we cannot thank him enough again i think this is his fifth year co-hosting alongside myself so that is amazing and he previously as you know we had panty bliss in the first three years we've had brendan courtney we've had alan hughes all hosting at the festival over the years yeah well anybody who's been to dublin pride over the last say 10 years will know paul uh not only as a very charismatic individual but also uh, and no, not a mean dancer and choreographer either. So um, uh, they can certainly look forward to a flavour of Dublin Pride uh, uh, at the weekend. I think also Cork Pride, Limerick Pride, uh, Waterford Pride last year. Paul has hosted, performed at m all the major prides, but also uh, you would see him on Ireland AM uh, as well as a host there and has done the community amazing, especially uh, last year, hosting for the first time ever Ireland AM direct from Dublin Pride. He did us so proud. But mm -hmm. most importantly, I have other co-hosts like Regina George and, of course, the Cosmatic carried away as well uh, with us. And of course, we have an amazing lesbian band, uh, Sparkle, from the whole way from Cork. Mm -hmm. And we all love uh, Sparkle to the last. And of course, queerness and alternative non-binary element is Shobi, uh, the new up-and-coming artists as well. And of course, we have music from the likes of the George. The George is coming to the festival. And we have uh, DJ Roos and of course, DJ Mo. Uh, Mo she can be for saying most no uh with colors uh coming uh on not only friday night but saturday night as well so uh that shall be amazing sisters are doing it for themselves it's girl power all the way we shouldn't uh omit to mention filthy gorgeous who has of course uh another one of the great compares that we will know from dublin pride and uh some of the other places around town we, uh, of course, Filthy T is with us. And of course, Mark T. Cox is flying in from Japan, who is based in London. He's over in Japan at the moment. And Mark T. Cox is actually from County Clare. And this will be the first queer event he has ever done in his home county since he'd become a, a cabaret style, uh, amazing performer. And of course, our friend Brew from New York is coming with us. And of course, Paul uh, Middleton is flying in from Germany, who has Irish roots at heart and has performed in 2019 and is coming back for all our bear audience out there. He's big and cuddly and gives an amazing hug. I was, I was about to say, uh, Paul is going to give you that, uh, what we would call bear kudos. He's, uh, he's, very, uh -huh. uh, he's very popular at Bear Fela. Oh, completely and absolutely. And of course, Bear Fela will be on in March. 
give the, the give the guys there a big plug on that one because again what has been amazing about the outing festival in its 10 years and i can't thank them enough all the other prides around our ireland from dublin pride to cork pride to belfast pride and most importantly, all the local prides, and I'm going to get them all. The Outing Festival has been a part of every key pride around Ireland. And that includes my hometown of Dundalk, Drada. We've been Carlo. We've been in Waterford, Wexford. We have been to, uh, and I'm getting it, Limerick mostly, uh, most years. We have been to, and of course, uh, Mayo, where... Uh, Mayo's first ever Pride, we had that, and we won't mention their names, that family who have been disturbing things at the <laughs> moment. When we actually took, took the, the Ireland's longest rainbow flag, which this year is 20 years old since it was developed first. We developed the first 20 years ago, and that was a over 200 foot long rainbow flag to the streets of Mayo and Castle Bar. Uh-huh. And we, we kind of kind of thank them out. And of course, Sligo Pride as well has been a really good kudos, and we've been there as well. And I have to say, you we love her. She is our Belfast Queen. On your Bex is coming the whole way down from Maverick in uh, Belfast. And we can have to say they've done an amazing to get again work with us as well. Yeah. Just before we finish on the entertainment, I want you to uh, just comment on two acts. The first one is Shobsey. Now, I wasn't that familiar with Shobsey, but I've since listened to Shobsey. What a great voice. What a charismatic individual. And the other, of course, is my uh, great friend, Teresa Carl. So they're going, both going to be playing, both very individual. Very different styles, very, uh, in a way, qu- queerness at its best. Yeah. And I think it is, and we, some people like the word, some people don't, but queer arts is where we are and what we are going to do. Shelby, I have to say, uh, I listened to him the night on the Late Late Show when he sang the word, uh, song, Small, small Town small Boy. Small Town Boy by the... By, by and Jennifer. I cried. Yeah. And I have to say, Ryan Tubbity that night and his encouraging words about diversity and inclusion within small communities, and especially around the whole element of what happened in Sligo at the time, literally pulled the community together as support for the LGBT plus community. And that's what we're all about. And that's what the festival is all about, is bringing diversity within our own community uh, together. And as you know yourself, we have our first ever queer film festival back in uh, and we're launching it this year with time lapse. And we have 11 short movies and two two full length movies. One is Lyra, our uh, amazing reporter and friend uh, from Derry and her story. And then, of course, the history around the secret uh, uh, film on uh, HIV and AIDS with Robbie Lawler. And you'll get oh, the correct but, the correct name on that for me. Yeah, both excellent. Now, a couple of things just before we uh, finish up, Eddie. It's at the Inn in Drumoland. Um, yeah. How can people book? Because I gather it's being, I, I know that the dormitory I've seen on the website, that's all sold out. So for people who are keen to... Uh, get in there and participate in everything. How can they book tickets for the weekend? Well, we've we, we've a couple of ways. If you want to come to the Outing Festival, one is you can book direct at theoutingfestival.com and we have singles and doubles and triple rooms, some left. Mm-hmm. But it's also for the first time ever with additional support from Falcher Ireland, we are going to do, one is a bus from Limerick from Mickey Martins and also from Ennis on the night, Saturday night, to for those who don't want to drink and drive. Safety is the most important. Absolutely. That's why we work with the likes of Gosh uh, in Limerick around safety, because we will be doing testing over the weekend. But also uh, all about getting there safely, we encourage eco end of things. You have the train and, of course, you have the bus will get you as far as Limerick, Shannon or Ennis. And all you have to do is give us a call. There's always someone around to pick you up and the rest. If not, the taxi is very close. So what would be the nearest station then? Would that be Ennis, perhaps? 
Ennis is uh, the nearest station for the train. And I would call it literally you're only 15, 20 minutes drive from the uh, Ennis train station to Drumoland. Yes, we're in the, just off the motorway. But most importantly, we're very much accessible. And we also have accessibility is one of our key elements. But also the festival, uh, like Dublin Pride last year, lead it the way uh, the Outing Festival is stepping up. And we have a whole green and biodiversity and eco uh, elements to our festival this year as well. Now, as uh, anybody can see from the uh, the poster behind me, the dates that it will all be happening, it's Friday the 10th of February and it goes on until Sunday night. Is that correct? That is correct. We are now gone from a two-day festival to a three-day festival. Mm -hmm. So you can either pick the two-day or a three-day festival package. That's no problem at all. The 10th to the 12th of February. And we have also at the same time, if you click on to GCN or blackknight.com, blackknight.ie as well, a, we have a competition, Mick, of a weekend for two full package to the hotel for two nights. Uh, and we have a competition running uh, from uh, Friday onwards uh, for the next week. So fingers crossed you could be in with a chance to win. If not, book direct with us and uh, check out theoutingfestival.com. Yeah. Well, I don't want to give people the wrong impression here, Eddie, but... Uh... Uh, what I have been told, that even if you don't meet your soulmate, there's a very good chance you'll have some really good fun for the weekend. And I don't know anybody who's come back uh, and said otherwise. So uh, uh, there's definitely, uh, as I say, there's adult fun to be had. There's a lot of adult fun to be had, but most importantly, it's about meeting your next best friend. And that's what it's all about. And relationships is all about friendship. And you have to start some way and not about on a nap and you just texting away and swiping left and right and this and that. And there's just, you see one part of it. This is about communications and talking to each other. But Mick, we've had, believe it or not, not one, but we're on our way to our second wedding, which is going to happen in July of this year from the Outing Festival, which I've helped put together on two occasions. But there is actually, believe it or not, about three other relationships still going on from the festival over the years. And of course, hundreds of friendships worldwide. Eddie, what more can we say? You've got to be congratulated on putting together a terrific event um, very positive event, an event that Ireland can be proud of. So, Eddie McGuinness, thank you for your time today. Mick, you're amazing, and what you do is amazing. But most importantly, this isn't about me. This is about the team around me, from mm -hmm. our chairperson, Ruth Dignam, to uh, Gary Duffy in Mayo, to uh, Frank, and all the other team, everyone out there. I cannot thank them enough because this is teamwork coming together and bringing people together. Theoutingfestival.com, we love you, and Mick, you're a star. Take care then, Eddie. You... I think we there we go. Is that it? Uh, yeah, anyway, yeah. recording, um, time remaining, oops. It's about... Okay, yeah, I'll end that Eddie, I'll get back to you anyway. I'll be putting out something next week anyway, so we'll talk then. No problem at all. You're a star, and thank you very much, Mick. Couldn't see the haunted forest for the trees regarding our gender identity and sexuality. When there's no place like home. Friends of Dorothy fighting for your civil rights.